If you're a fan of the channel, then you know that uh, for some time I have been struggling with the autofocus motor on my telescope. Um, I think I have finally got that working, and so I wanted to make a video for anyone else who might be having similar troubles. So uh, the type of problem that I'm having is related to the ASI Air Pro. If you're using uh, a laptop, then you might not have had these kind of problems, and you might not have had these problems because laptop solutions uh, have a whole variety of different options and settings and things you can step through. But the ASI Air Pro has only really like one setting that you can change. And if that doesn't work, then what do you do? So if you have found yourself in a similar boat, then this video is for you. So a couple of things that I did to help myself out was I invested in a hand controller. Um, before you can start the autofocus routine on this thing, you have to at least get it roughly in focus. And that actually is kind of hard to do with a tablet or phone screen. You gotta press the little up and down arrows to get this thing dialed in. And if you're wearing gloves because it's cold outside, or if you have a crummy tablet that doesn't register your taps very well, then that can be uh, kind of difficult. Having the ability to physically feel the buttons and feeling them being pressed uh, really makes uh, getting your rough adjustment uh, very nice. So I, I definitely recommend the hand controller. Also, I invested in a better tablet. This is the A series tablet from Samsung that I was using before, and it is garbage. I hate this thing. This is a brand new tablet. Uh, it when you, its touch screen is very insensitive. Every time you tap it, it like ignores you. Every, every three out of four times, get ignored. So that makes using it very frustrating. I invested in an S7 tablet from Samsung and this thing is amazing. The thing I like the most about it is it comes with this electronic pin that registers taps every time and it is very precise, much more so than your finger taps. If you do want to use your finger, of course that works as well and the it registers finger taps very nicely. Now the actual problem that I was having was with regard to backlash. Uh, what backlash is, is when the gears are moving in one direction, they engage nicely. But when you go to reverse direction, there's a little bit of free play before the teeth re-engage in the opposite direction. What the uh, computer needs to know, if you are moving in one direction and I now want to reverse, how much do I have to move before changes actually start happening? I'd watched other videos on YouTube to determine what your the proper backlash value should be, but those did not seem to work with my application. And I think part of the reason why is because those telescopes were refractors, whereas my Schmidt Cassegrain uses a completely different type of uh, focusing mechanism. In addition, clearing the backlash on the focus motor wasn't the only problem that I was having. I also needed to clear the, the backlash in the focus mechanism of the telescope itself. Once I figured that part out and how to measure the backlash of the telescope, things just started working immediately. The way that I figured out how to do this was to watch the uh, star size graph on the, um, the tablet. So if you've used the ASI Air before, you'll know that when you're in the focus routine, it's got a, a little picture of the star that you're, you're zoomed in on and a graph that shows you how big that star is. Now you know that when stars are out of focus, they get big and donut shaped and when they're in focus, they get nice and small pinpoint. So what you would do is you would roughly focus this in manually uh, to get it as, as small as you can. And then you start stepping in the opposite direction and you see how many times do I have to actually press the, the focus step button before I actually see that star starting to change size. Um, once I see some actual size change, that means that you have successfully cleared the backlash in both the telescope and your focus motor. Once I used that number, for me it was somewhere between 90 and 100 for each telescope. Uh, once I used that number, everything just worked perfectly. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to show you what that looks like on the ASI Air's uh, interface. 
All right, here we are in the ASI Air Pro. I am in focus mode. I've got half second exposure, so I'm going to go ahead and start this. You can see that our stars are roughly focused, but they're still a little bit fuzzy. We're going to use the button in the upper left hand corner, this plus button, to open this up. This graph in the upper right hand corner is showing us the size of these stars. Uh, here you can see we've got a value of about 3.5, 3.7, somewhere around in there. To adjust the backlash on this, we need to first check the um, autofocus settings here. And what we need to determine is this backslash value here. I've already got uh, 100. I'm going to go ahead and just make that a smaller value, like 10. Now my slow step speed is set to 10 and my fast step speed is set to 100. And I'm setting my backlash to a default value of 10. Uh, those are the settings that we want to have in here. I'm going to close the EAF menu. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to, we're in slow mode here and I'm going to press this up arrow several times just to make sure that I have cleared any backlash in this direction. If I press up, I can see that the stars are getting a little bit smaller. So here I've got uh, my star size somewhere between one and a half and two is where it seems to be bouncing back and forth. Now I pressed the up arrow key to get us to this position. So that's the last direction I was moving. So what I want to do is I want to start pressing the down arrow key and I want to count how many times do I have to press that down arrow key before I actually notice a change happening here in the graph. And I like to, to notice a sizable change. It's, it's bouncing around quite a bit, so you just kind of have to eyeball this. So I'm somewhere between one and a half and two. So I'm going to press the down button once. One. Notice it's really not changed a whole lot. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine. There, we're starting to get a little bit of a spike. See how that has definitely changed? A little satellite or something went flying through there. That was kind of cool. So I had to click the down button nine times before that graph really started to, to shoot up above two. So that tells me since let's go back into the EAF menu. Since my slow step speed, that's the mode I'm currently in, is 10 and I had to press it nine times before I noticed a difference. That means that my backslash, backlash value here is 90. Nine times 10. 90. So we'll uh, tag that in for our backlash value and that's it. That's how you determine what your backlash is on a Schmidt Cassegrain or the Raza telescope using the ASI Air Pro. From here, we've got this dialed in uh, close enough that we can, we can use the autofocus. And because it now knows what its backlash uh, value is, the autofocus will actually work properly. This is a Raza, so it's a F2, very fast telescope. I don't need um, very long exposures. On my C8, uh, that's F10, quite a bit slower, so I have to use longer exposures when doing the autofocus. I usually somewhere between three and five seconds, depending on how bright the stars are where I'm pointed. With just one second exposures, we'll let this go ahead and run its routine. Incidentally, if you've ever looked at this graph and you've always been curious, like, what exactly am I looking at? What the, uh, the little computer is doing here is it's... Um, adjusting your, your focus knob, and it's taking note of how big is that star. So right now it says that star is like 2.44. And it's adjusting those up and down focus arrows, and it presses the up one a couple of times, and it says how much bigger did it get? Did it get bigger? Did it get smaller? That star is being plotted on this graph. So here, star size, it says the star size is somewhere between 2.3 and 2.8 right here, and it was that size when I was using a focus value of uh, 30,000, 
500 something. So then it changes the focus knob to like 30,700 something and it says, did the star get bigger or smaller? And it says, well, it was here and it went up. So it got a little bit bigger. And if I press the down arrow key, maybe that made my star a little bit smaller. And so what it's trying to do is eventually it's going to get smaller, 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 but then it's going to start getting bigger again. And so it's going to draw this curve where it says at 30,700, my stars were huge. At 30,400, know, my stars were huge. And at all the numbers in between, the star was smaller. And what we're looking for is the bottom of that curve. At what number was my star size the smallest? That's how you read this graph. Installing the electronic autofocuser on a C8 or a Raza 8-inch telescope is a little bit different than uh, installing on a refractor. Um, so we're going to uh, run you through how to do that exactly. Now this is actually really easy. It's so easy that a five-year-old could do it. And just to prove that, we're gonna bring in our own five-year-old. There she is. <laughs> All right. So the first step here is there's a little uh, a knob on the back of the telescope and you have to pull that rubber off. Now, I've already removed that because that actually was pretty tight. I don't think my five-year-old could pull that off. So pull that part off first and from here on out, get your five-year-old. Uh, There's a little orange bracket on the back of the telescope. We need to remove the screws on that. On my C8, I actually had to remove the entire bracket, but when I did that for the Raza, uh, it, it didn't, pieces felt like they were kind of loose or something in there. So uh, on the Raza, we're going to remove the screws from this orange bracket, but we're going to leave the bracket in place. The autofocuser comes with uh, a bracket that looks like this. Now, if you're using the ASI Air Pro, I recommend that you don't get rid of this, uh, even though it won't work with the installation of a Raza or a C8. Uh, but what I like to use this for is uh, I actually mount my ASI Air to this, and then I can mount that in turn to the front of this uh, orange dovetail bracket. I'll show you how to do that later. So reserve that component for later. You'll need to actually purchase a special mounting bracket for the autofocuser so that it will work with the uh, C8 and the Raza telescopes. Um, the autofocuser comes with all of the parts that you would need to attach it to a refractor, but it won't work for reflectors like these. So get yourself the proper bracket, and then what we'll do next is we will uh, screw this to that orange bracket uh, that we just unscrewed. For this final step, there's, um, we're going to thread this barrel over the focusing knob and then attach two screws at the bottom here. There are two set screws on this um, barrel that we will uh, tighten up to attach this securely to the focusing knob. So two more screws on the bottom, the two set screws, and then we're done. So with that extra mounting bracket that uh, came with the autofocuser, what I like to use that for is to, um, I use it to attach my ASI Air Pro to the dovetail bar on the bottom of the Raza. So the way I do that is um, there's two mounting screws on the bottom of the ASI Air Pro. Um, these slots don't quite line up with those screw holes, so I only just use one of the screw holes. So I put a little screw right on that guy and then turn this upside down. There's already a screw hole in the dovetail, so I just line up this bracket with that hole. And then I use a little 
thumb screw. This is a f uh, quarter inch 20 screw that you use just for regular camera equipment and stuff. And I drilled out the hole in that slot just a little bit bigger to accommodate that thumb screw. So we slide that guy right in that slot. All right, so there you can see the ASI is now attached to the bottom of the dovetail bracket. Uh, this is the front of the telescope where the corrector plate is. And uh, this makes it really convenient to get all your cables and stuff right from the computer to the camera in the front. So what I'm gonna do now is show you two images. The first one is uh, the ghost of Cassiopeia, which I shot for the last video that I made. And you'll see that the, um, the stars are, it, it's okay, but their stars are just a little bit out of focus. They're not quite right. The second image is the heart nebula, which I shot just the other night after I finally was able to fix this autofocus issue. And you'll see that the stars look a lot better than in the first image. Now, if this content was helpful to you, I, I hope that you'll give me a like and I hope that I have earned a subscription as well. Um, leave me a comment if you have suggestions for future videos or things you'd like to see and clear skies.